Now back to the videotape testimony released today by the House Judiciary Committee. About 12 hours were released today, and we're airing as much as we can before Washington Journal begins at 7 a.m. Eastern. For the next half hour, testimony from Secret Service agent Sandra Verna. My name is Craig W. Murphy, and I'm employed by Deposition Service Incorporated. The date today is June 11, 1998, and the time is approximately 1014 a.m. This deposition is being held at 1001 Pennsylvania Avenue Northwest, Suite 490, Washington, D.C. The name of the witness is Sandra Verna. This deposition of Ms. Verna is being taken in a grand jury investigation conducted by the Office of Independent Counsel. At this time, the attorneys will identify themselves and parties they represent, please. Uh, Michael Travers, Associate Independent Counsel. Marianne Worth, W-I-R-T-H, Associate Independent Counsel. At this time, the court reporter will identify herself and swear in witness, please. My name is Elizabeth Easton. Ms. Verna, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear, under penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Could you state your full name, please? Sandra Jane Verna. Uh, and could you give us the spelling of your last name? V as in Victor, E-R-N-A. How old are you? 31 years old. And can you tell us your exact job title? Officer. Okay. Uh, before we get started uh, with the questioning, I'd like to go over a few uh, rights. We're deposing you today in lieu of a grand jury appearance. Uh, and as you've seen, uh, we've served you with a subpoena for an appearance before the grand jury. Mm -hmm. This deposition is being conducted instead of that. Uh, this proceeding today will be made available to the grand jury, so it's being conducted under the federal rules of criminal procedure, including the grand jury secrecy rule, federal rule of criminal procedure 6E. You have the right to have attorneys present outside the room, and in fact, uh, you do have three attorneys yes. outside the room. Is that correct? Correct. Can you uh, tell us their names? Michael Ibig, Gary Grinler, and I think Preston was his last name is out there. Anderson, I'm sorry, David Anderson. <laughs> okay. Uh, and any time that you'd like to consult with them, please let us know. We'll temporarily adjourn the proceedings. Okay. Uh, you have a right to consult with them at any time that you wish. You also have a right not to answer any questions, the truthful answer to which would incriminate you. You do have an obligation to tell the truth. Uh, you may be prosecuted for perjury if you lie, if you're misleading, or if you answer, I don't know or I don't remember, if in fact you do know or remember. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. We also uh, are conducting this deposition under an informal agreement with the United States Secret Service that uh, in conducting this inquiry, no questions will be posed uh, for the purpose of seeking information that reveals protective techniques or procedures of the Secret Service, including security technologies, armaments, or devices within or around the White House complex. If we ask a question that you believe you cannot answer without disclosing that sort of information, please just let us know and you can step out at that point and confer with your attorneys. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And also, uh, at this time, the Secret Service, the Department of Justice, is asserting a protective function privilege with regard to certain seeking to obtain only non-privileged information in this deposition. If we ask a question that you believe falls with privileged information at that point, please let us know and step outside and consult with your attorneys. Okay. okay. When did you join the United States Secret Service? October 5th, 1988. Could you tell us what your assignments have been with the Secret Service since that time? Yeah, I wrote the date, so can I look at this? What I've done since then? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, from October 88 to October of 90, when I got out of training in February, of 89, I was assigned to the Treasury Building. Um, October of 90 to March of 94, I was assigned to 1310 L Street in our time and attendance section. From March of 94 to July of 94, I was the East Wing Relief Officer. From July of 94 to October of 94, the Mansion Relief Officer. And from October 94, I went out on light duty January 95. I was pregnant with my daughter and on limited duty, so I was assigned to our recruiting office. And I went back to post about September of 95. And since October of 96 till present, I'm in our assi assignments and scheduling office.
during the time that you were working the post, uh, mm -hmm. you said between October of 1995, I'm sorry, September of 1995 mm -hmm. and approximately October of 1996, right. which shifts did you work? Did you work any other posts in the White House complex uh, during this period? Maybe, maybe in the West Wing on some occasions, but when I went to the Assignments and Scheduling Office, I pretty much worked my day job over there whenever I could. So maybe hit or miss five or six times outside of, of that, but probably no more than that. Do you recall when you first met Monica Lewinsky? I think it was probably when I came back from maternity leave, which would have been September of 95, um, after I had had my daughter. I don't recall meeting her prior to that. Uh, how did you meet her? Um, a lot of times when you're sitting there and you see new interns or volunteers walking by, you, you know, stop, ask them, hi, how are you, are you new, um, what's your name, where are you working, that kind of thing. And that's probably what started the conversation. I don't re recall a specific conversation, but that's probably what had happened when I met her. Um, any, probably any of the posts I worked in the West Wing, I would have seen her if she was working. Could you describe for us how well you, you knew her during the time that she worked at the White House? Um, I talked to her every day when I seen her there. Um, she was going to get breakfast. I would say hello to her, how was your day? And, um, in passing, um, I would talk to her. What were typically the subjects of conversation? Anything aside from small talk like that? Small talk, you know, how are the kids, how are the family, what are you doing this weekend? Um, she was always talking about being on a diet or telling me about her mom trying to fix her up with blind dates. Just normal, everyday conversation. Did you at any time uh, hear a rumor involving Miss Lewinsky uh, and having something to do with the White House movie theater? Yes, I remember hearing a general rumor um, that she had been in the movie theater, and I asked her about it. Um, I asked her about it specifically because um, at the time, the president and the first lady a lot of times would take a bunch of people into the movie theater, and they would see a movie on the weekend, and it was fairly routine. And I asked her, I said, did you go to the movie theater? And she said no. She had been working late in her office in the East Wing, um, she did say that the president had come out of the restroom that was right around the corner from where her office was, their kind of kitty quarter, and she was working late there, and her friend was from visiting from California, and she said he did come over, say hello to her, meet her friend from California, but she didn't go to the movie theater. So the, the substance of the rumor that you heard was that she had gone into the movie theater with the president to watch a movie? And with possibly that was the, infer the, the only infer general rumor that I had heard was that she had gone to the movie theater. And when you asked her about it, she told you that that had not actually happened. Right. She said she worked late in her office. Do you recall seeing Monica Lewinsky uh, in the area near the post around the time that she was transferred from the White House to the Department of Defense? Yeah, it, it was probably like a week before she got transferred. I do remember seeing her over there. Do you have a recollection of uh, any specific incidents where you, you saw her in that area around that time? There was a 
separate door. And she had walked in um, crying. She was very upset. Um, said she was, was leaving. She was being transferred. And she stopped to talk to Betty Curry. She went in and talked to Betty. And Betty came out in the hallway. They were just kind of outside the door, close enough for me to see. But I, all I remember hearing was Betty saying, um, I can't help you. You'll have to talk to Nancy. And then Betty walked back in the office. Nancy Earnwright came out. Um, started talking to her in the hallway and said there was nothing that she could do. Let me make sure I understand this. So Monica Lewinsky initially came down the hallway toward the Oval Office. Correct. Correct. And she told you, I'm leaving? Yes, yeah, she said I'm being transferred. I remember her, and I mean, not specifically word for word, but she said, I'm being transferred, and she was crying. She wasn't very happy. Okay. What did you say to her in response? I don't remember word for word, but it was probably, I'm sorry to hear that. And then she went in and talked to Betty. And you were able to observe her, at least part of her conversation with Betty Curry? Yeah, she looked upset. She didn't want to be transferred. And where exactly was she having this conversation with Betty? Here's the secretary's entrance door. They were probably just maybe like two feet outside of the, the door going into the secretary's office. Correct. About how many feet away would you say you were? She was probably maybe seven feet, six, seven feet away. And do you recall exactly what you heard Betty Curry say to her? I just remember Betty saying, you know, there's nothing I can do. You'll have to talk to Nancy. Could you hear what Monica said back to Betty at that point? I know I don't remember anything specific from that point. Uh, do you recall what Nancy Hernreich said to Monica when she came out? Uh, I just remember Nancy saying, told us? "No, nothing. Just other than there was nothing she could do." No. And then they started walking away. Did the conversation between Monica and Nancy Hernreich take place in the in the same location that you've described? The conversation between right. Monica and Betty Curry. Right. Uh, and, and after Monica finished speaking with Nancy Hernreich, which direction did they walk away in? And that's away from, away from the where office. you were. Right. Right. Okay. Is there anything else that you recall about those conversations uh, that you haven't Nothing described that I haven't to us mentioned. already? Did you ever receive any gifts from Monica Lewinsky? Yes, I did. A birthday gift in January of 96. It was, um, it was like a box of, of soaps. There was um, lotions in it. Um, I think there was like two bottles of lotion and a couple of bars of soap in there. Um, I still have it, but um, she had given that to me for my birthday. Anything else? Um, a Christmas card. I got a Christmas card from her. Do you recall when December she gave of, that to you? December of 95, I got that Christmas card. I don't remember the exact date. Did you ever give her any gifts? In no, return? I did not. Did you consider it unusual to receive gifts from a White House staffer? Um, I have exchanged Christmas gifts with Betty and Nancy and Debbie. Um, prior to that, that's the first time I ever got a birthday gift from anybody, but Monica had... Um, she was just a gift-giving kind of person. Um, usually when I talked to Monica, it was myself, Bayani Nelda standing there, and we just all kind of talked about birthdays in general, and I know um, she'd given Nell a tie for his birthday, and then my birthday was shortly there after that, and she'd given me the lotions, and then from that point, um, I didn't run into her around her birthday, or I would have reciprocated and given her a gift back. Okay. At the time that you saw Monica have the conversations with Betty Curry and Nancy Hermann that you've described, did you know uh, of any official or unofficial reason why she was being transferred from the White House? No, I didn't know why she was being transferred. Since that time, have you heard from any source uh, other than the media, let's exclude for the moment the newspapers, the television, uh, any official or unofficial reason why she was transferred? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh, excluding 
things that you might have read in the newspapers or seen on TV mm -hmm. since the time that you told us about where you saw her talking to Betty Corrine into your mark. Have you heard of any official or unofficial reason why she was transferred to the Pentagon? Um, without revealing any privileged information, no, anything I've read in the paper is pretty much um, in regards to her being transferred, all that I knew. Okay. Have you ever spoken with Officer Stephen Poppy about Monica Walensky? Yes. What has Stephen Poppy told you? Um, he, I don't even know how we got on the subject, but with, um, when all this first came out in the press, a lot of people had started talking, and he did say that um, he had seen her um, come in through the West Wing, or through the Southwest Gate to go to the West Wing while he was on shift. Did he describe uh, anything further about who escorted Ms. Lewinsky? Um, he did say um, Mike McCurry had escorted her on occasion. Did he say how many times she had come in through the Southwest Gate? I don't remember specifically. Um, I don't think it was any more than one or two, but I don't, offhand, I don't remember. And I believe you mentioned that Officer Poppy told you this after Correct. the Monica Lewinsky story became public. Right. Uh, did he describe when the occurrences took place in which Ms. Lewinsky was escorted? Mm, no, I don't remember offhand. Did you understand him to mean that that had taken place before the story became public yes. in January oh, yes. 1998? Yes. Okay. Have you heard anything that pertains to Ms. Lewinsky from Officer Michael Rice? Um, the only thing I recall hearing from um, Mike was that there was, when the National Enquirer story came out, that um, one of the people that worked over in the West Wing, Debbie Schiff, had had the um, Enquirer article signed by the president. Um, I think he said you were smeared with the best of us. I think he said that it had um, was written on there. Now, when you say the National Enquirer article, do you mean the the article? Well, well I'm, why don't you? Explain there was an to article that was in the National Enquirer, and on the front of it, um, Debbie Schiff had her picture on there, and she was the West Wing receptionist. And I do recall him saying that um, she had showed him that she had it signed, autographed by the president, and it just said, "You've been smeared with the best of us." And the president had had written that yes. with his autograph. Yes. We all joked around about getting it signed, you know, oh, let's get it signed while we're over there, but um, he did get it signed. When you say we all... The officers that were assigned over there or previously been assigned over there that knew Debbie, um, we joked around about having her autograph it. And that's uniformed division officers working in the West Wing Correct. near Correct. where Debbie works, the right. West Wing reception area? Uh, Do you know whether Debbie Schiff signed any copies of that article herself? Um, I think she signed um, Officer Subert, Chris Subert. Um, I didn't see it. He just said that she had signed it. Could you spell his last name for us? S-E-U-B-E-R-T. <coughs> you said you hadn't seen that article signed by her yourself. No, I didn't actually see it. He said he was taking a copy over there to get it signed. And then later on in the day when I seen him, he said it. she did sign it. Do you know Bionni Nelvis? Yes. Uh, how do you know him? Out there, so he ended up just talking to the stewards. And I talked to him usually whenever we were working over there together. Right. move around within a limited area, is that right. correct?
it could be, you know, each time I was on post or if he was there for just a short while. We always talked when I was on post. And, and you were on that post for about a year, I, mm -hmm. I believe you mentioned earlier, between September 1995 and October 1996. Right. Is it fair to say then that um, most of the time that you were posted uh, at those locations, you had occasion to speak with him? Mm -hmm. uh, how well do you know him after now speaking with him on those occasions? Um, I'd say he's a work acquaintance, acquaintance. I wouldn't say we're really good friends. I mean, we've talked about family and all that, but um, outside of the job, I really don't know that much outside of the job. What kinds of matters did you usually talk about with Mr. Nelvis? A lot of times my kids, um, you know, his son, or just everyday stuff, nothing. Um, it wasn't just like a set of topics. I just had my daughter. I was always bringing in pictures. We talked about my children a lot. Um, you know, and vice versa, I mean, he would talk about his family, what they were doing, and, um, you know, just killing time conversation pretty much while you're standing on post. Did you ever uh, discuss Monica Lewinsky with him? Um, probably after she left, you know, I'd ask if he had talked to her or seen her or said hello because we all kind of talked. Whenever we had seen each other, we all talked and, um, yeah, I'm sure I did. You know, I, I, I know I asked him if he's talked to her or seen her. Uh, do you recall what he responded on any of those occasions? I remember um, him saying that she had called um, on the pantry phone. I actually, I remember being there when she had called on the pantry phone. I don't know what the conversation was about. I just remember saying, hey, now, he said, you know, oh, it's Monica. I said, sorry, I said, hi. I just kind of went about my business and waited for him to get off the phone, but nothing, nothing more specific than that. Just sorry, I said, hi, how's it going? That kind of thing. Were you, were you able to overhear any part of the conversation that he had with her on that occasion? Not that I remember. I just remember him saying it was Monica and I said, tell her hi. But I don't even remember the day. I don't remember. I just know after, after she was gone, I do remember being there one day when she had called, but do you remember on any other occasions uh, Mr. Nelvis telling you or discussing with him the fact that he had spoken with the phone, uh, with Monica, I'm sorry, on the phone? Can you repeat that? It's pretty much the same. Are there, are there any, were there any other occasions on which you talked with Bionni Nelvis about Bionni Nelvis speaking with Monica Lewinsky on the phone. I remember that, that one, maybe one or two incidences, but I don't, nothing that stands out other than I had talked to Monica, nothing. Did he ever tell you about any gifts that he had received from Monica Lewinsky? Um, he did say that he got a tie. Do you recall when he told you that? I think it was, it was for his birthday. It was shortly after his birthday, and I remember him saying, no, this is the tie that Monica got. So when he told you this, he was wearing it? Yeah. And he showed it to you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember Monica saying when she walked by, she said, oh, that's the tie I got him. But as for date, time, I don't remember that. I just do, I do remember her saying that that was the tie. Was, did she walk by and point that out at approximately the same time as he showed you the tie or, or did those events happen on two different occasions? Yeah, it was probably the same, it was probably the same day. I mean, I don't recall specifically, but I'm sure the day he showed me the tie was when he got it and she probably came by. That would have been before she was transferred to oh, yeah. the Pentagon? Yeah, I know it was before I got my birthday gift, so his birthday had to be sometime between September and December. But Did Mr. Nelvis ever tell you about any gifts uh, exchanged between Monica Lewinsky and the President? I don't, I don't recall Nell saying anything. I know Monica said she did get him a, a tie for, um, I think it was his birthday or Christmas for the president, but I don't remember, I don't remember specifically what occasion it was, but I just know she said that she had gotten him a tie. But I don't remember the occasion. And the only reason I remember that is because, um, like another day in passing, she said that was the tie. But I don't remember what it looked like. I don't. 
Was, was there ever a point at which Mr. Nelvis said to you something along the lines of Monica Lewinsky also gave the president a tie? No, just I don't. like she gave me one. No, I don't remember now. I, they could have been similar designs, but I don't, I don't remember. Is that what you're like, they looked alike? Is that the way you were phrasing that? Or? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't really mean to imply anything by that. Just did, did he ever suggest to you that Monica had given the president any gifts? I don't remember him specifically saying, Monica got him a tie. I remember more so Monica saying, I got him a tie, versus now. Did Bayani Nelvis ever tell you that he had seen Monica Lewinsky outside the White House? Um, I think he ran into her on a trip. I'm not sure. I, th I don't remember the trip. I know he said that he was out on a trip and had run into her. But I don't, I don't know where the location was. I don't travel, and I'm not one to, to follow up on the trips you know, that a lot of guys when they travel, they're like, you know, oh, so there's a trip going to L.A. or there's a trip going here or there. I don't follow the trip, so when he said he was out on a trip, um, I didn't remember picking up the location, but I do recall him saying that he had seen her out on a detail. Um, they stayed in the same hotel, but she was assigned, that was with her new job. She was assigned there with her new job. Now, when you refer to trips, these are official trips? Official trips, business trips. Uh, and when you say out on a detail, that means uh, um, out on a detail with his job as a steward. So this was a trip that he had taken in his capacity as a presidential steward. Correct. Was the president also along on that trip? I believe so. And he told you that he had seen Monica. He had on seen that Monica. Trip? And she she had also gone to the same place. Right, with her job that she was at. Was that at her Pentagon job? Yes. Uh, did he say whether he uh, had had dinner with her? Uh, it was either dinner or lunch. Yes, he did. Nelvis had dinner with Monica. It was either dinner or lunch while they were on the trip. Did he tell you anything more about that no. occasion? Mm -mm. Did Bayani Nelvis ever suggest to you that Monica and the president had uh, a relationship? With him? No, he did not. Uh, did he ever tell you anything about Monica and the president? talking to each other on the phone? No, he did not. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the business trip um, that you just testified about that um, Melvis told you that, that he had run into Monica, mm -hmm. do you have any recollection whether that trip was abroad or was it a, a trip within the U.S.? That I don't recall. Like I said, I didn't follow the trips because I don't travel mm -hmm. and I didn't think, I didn't ask. I have my own. That's okay, no problem. <laughs> um, I want to go back to um, the beginning of your testimony just for a moment. When you were talking about um, how you would run into Monica sometimes, um, you know, in, in everyday work, almost on a daily basis, I think you said she, you mm -hmm. said she... It was probably any of the posts that I was at. Okay. If I, think. I mean, it would be like you walking by the receptionist out here. Hi, hi, what are you doing? You know. Generally, where would you run into her? Where would she be coming from and going to, if you know? Um, when I first met her, she was there. I believe she started out as a volunteer, and then there was the government shutdown. And then she worked in Leon Panetta's office. So I would see her walking back and forth. Um, she would pass my posts. Which post much. would that be? was working, um, do you know where in the White House her, her job was located? I think when she went over to the East Wing, she was in legislative affairs. Okay. And um, do you know what, for what reason she was in the West Wing when you would see her? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, it could be 
deliver paperwork. I mean, they had offices on both sides. Um, I don't know why she would, other than the breakfast run, but. Okay. No. That's on the way to breakfast? Um, yeah, a lot of times I would, because they have, um, they can go down to the mess and get breakfast in the morning. That's usually when I would see her in the morning. And <clears throat> would it be necessary to walk by the Oval Office to go to breakfast for someone like her from the East Wing? No, but if she, if she was walking by and she seen that I was there, she might say hello or how's it going, running downstairs. You mentioned previously that uh, Officer Stephen Poppy told you that uh, about at least one occasion on which Ms. Lewinsky had come to the Southwest Gate and been escorted mm -hmm. by Mike McCurry. Mm -hmm. Did he describe anything else uh, about that incident? No. Okay. Have you ever heard uh, any rumors uh, or stories connected with Monica Lewinsky that have to do with someone finding stained tissues or towels in no, the vicinity not. of the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard uh, from another Secret Service officer uh, a rumor that Monica Lewinsky was having a relationship with the President? No, I did not. I think that's all we have then. Depositions concluded at 1046.35. We'll have more videotape depositions in the investigation of the president in a moment. But first, some information on upcoming programming. This week on our companion network, C-SPAN 2, we'll bring you a series of speeches on civil rights in the Supreme Court. 